Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Wait a minute. Wait, it's the 20th of November. Why is that? Oh, sh**. The channel just had its birthday. Happy birthday to Solving the Money Problem. Cue the birthday music. Wait, what the f was that? Uh, anyway, point I wanted to make guys is thank you so much to everybody who's been watching, supporting the channel, all the subscribers, all the weirdos who watch every single video and still aren't subscribed by the way, please don't subscribe to the channel, like seriously, I actually don't care, but I do seriously want to say thank you so much to everybody who has supported the channel, whether that's by viewing the videos, leaving me negative feedback in the comments to help me improve, trolling me, helping support on Patreon, channel memberships, buying the merch and everything else. I really do want to say thank you guys. And of course, today I'm celebrating by creating more content for you. And just for the number nerds, here's an overview of the first 12 months of the channel. Now, I may have doctored one of these figures. My 12 month income reveal video is coming soon. I don't want to spoil that one, but the rest of these are legit. I just, what even is this? Can you imagine one year ago, no channel, one year later, 20 million views, 150,000 subscribers to some guy who smokes too much weed, swears too much, doesn't shave enough, looks like he fell out of a garbage truck, doesn't care about that, and talks nothing but Tesla. I mean, what even is this? 2020, I guess. Strange year. So, let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with, at minimum, $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. You will not own a car in 10 years. The era of the internal combustion engine car is ending. We may have reached peak ice. As Elon Musk predicted during Tesla's recent battery day presentation, in the long term, there won't be an ice industry. From here on out, it's all about electric vehicles and autonomous ride sharing, and the implications for society and the automotive industry are huge. Need evidence? Oil demand from passenger vehicles is predicted to have already peaked according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance and demand from overall road transport is expected to peak in 2031. Electric vehicles currently displace the need for 1 million barrels of oil each day and by 2040 EVs are projected to disrupt demand for over 17 million barrels of oil per day, a figure steadily on the rise as EV costs plummet. Shout out to everybody who's long oil stocks, in fact oil bet that those are going to be terrible investments, even worse than that joke, Jesus Christ, I can't believe I just said that. In today's blog, I'm going to discuss how EVs are set to win the transit race by sheer economic advantage, becoming the foundation for a autonomous ride-sharing fleets of the future. As that happens, it will soon become uneconomical and societally unacceptable for you to hold on to that gas-guzzling car. Let's dive in. Electric Vehicles Competitive Advantage This year, EVs are expected to surpass 2.8% market share globally. While this might seem negligible, growth is accelerating at an unprecedented rate. EVs are projected to make up 10% of new car sales in 2025 and over 25% by 2030. Now I'm just going to jump in here. I think these are very conservative estimates, but I am mindful that there'll be some developing nations who are more likely to be pumping out ICE vehicles until a little bit later down the line. But overall, I still think these are very conservative estimates. 25% by 2030, ha, huh, no fucking way. As energy expert Ramez Nam explains, their growth rate is phenomenal. It took 20 years to sell the first million electric cars. It took 18 months to sell the next million. It took four months to sell the fifth million. That is the pace of this change. This is growing twice as fast as solar. Stumping forecasters again and again, this surge is driven by pure economic advantage. While personal vehicles currently cost around 53 cents per mile, autonomous electric vehicles are expected to vastly undercut this threshold at only 4 cents per mile. And even though EVs have historically been more expensive than ice-powered cars, EVs are far cheaper to operate and maintain. The yearly cost to operate an EV in the US stands at about $485, lower than half 
the $1,117 to operate a gas-powered vehicle. During Elon's Battery Day presentation, <laughs> by the way, I've just got to interrupt. I, I love how it's Elon's Battery Day presentation rather than Tesla's, but I mean, everybody does this. Let's be honest, Elon is really such a key man at Tesla. This is almost a fair statement. Not to disparage the thousands of brilliant people working under his guidance, but <laughs> let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> During Elon's Battery Day presentation, he laid out Tesla's plan to drive EV costs even lower by revolutionizing the battery industry and redesigning the fundamentals of the battery cell itself. The company's new tabless battery represents a range of technical breakthroughs that result in a five times increase in energy, a six times increase in power, and a 16% increase in range. These achievements in battery technology along with Tesla's advancements in the battery production process could halve the cost of producing every kilowatt hour. With increased economies of scale, we could see a fully autonomous $25,000 Tesla model within three years. Continuing declines in battery and production costs will ultimately make an EV purchase so obvious that you won't need to calculate the long-term payoff. Going electric will be a foregone conclusion. Increased investment in EVs. Beyond plunging costs, investment is also booming and auto manufacturers in addition to Tesla are locked in a worldwide EV race. Volkswagen is set to spend $66 billion on EVs over the next five years. Nissan is charging ahead with the vision to integrate its EVs into a broader consumer ecosystem through the company's intelligent mobility strategy. And GM has pledged to go all in on electric in the near future as it strives to release 20 new electric models by 2023. This trend is not only affecting passenger transportation. EVs are also disrupting large-scale shipping operations. For example, in January, UPS invested in EV platform arrival and plans to purchase 10,000 vehicles from the company, 70% of which will be used in the US. UPS plans to acquire at least 2,000 EVs per year by 2022, adding to its current fleet of about 100,000 vehicles globally. The company was already working towards electric alternatives in 2017 when it ordered 125 Tesla electric semi-trucks. The Tesla Semi, which even today is 20% cheaper on a per mile basis than gasoline-powered trucks, is just one of many vanguards showcasing the extraordinary scale of the electric takeover from compact cars to large-scale transit. Over the coming decade, market forces will catalyze consumer adoption of EVs, likely in the form of autonomous fleets at an astounding rate. Peter is absolutely spot on with this point. Especially in the commercial arena, electric vehicles are literally going to sell themselves. Every business owner, every fleet operator who does the numbers will literally be a moron not to shift to EVs as soon as humanly possible. I've covered this in detail. I've made a video detailing Tesla Semi, the impact that will have. Tesla's secret van, which is now no longer a secret. It has been confirmed by Elon since that video was made. And of course, the Cybertruck and its potential to make Tesla billions and its particular uses as a utility vehicle for commercial use, not just for consumers. Electric Autonomous Fleets While personal EVs continue to proliferate, the aggregate mileage of EVs will rise exponentially faster as autonomous electric ride-sharing fleets gradually become commonplace. McKinsey predicts that 1 in 10 cars sold could be a shared vehicle by 2030. Numerous leading car share operators already employ EVs, such as Daimler's Car2Go and BMW's DriveNow programs. Meanwhile, most autonomous vehicle developers have also included electric vehicle models in various testing phases. As found by a University of Texas study, if autonomous taxis stood at a cost of 75 cents per mile, over 39% of miles would be covered by these services, and at half that price. 37.5 cents per mile, autonomous taxis would cover 75% of miles based on pure economic calculi. Just as is the case with autonomous vehicles, the way that most people will first encounter an electric vehicle won't be a result of buying one for themselves. These vehicles are going to be rapidly deployed mostly as electric taxis, explains Ramez Nam. And big players are fast jumping on the bandwagon. For one, last year, Apple hired Tesla's VP of Engineering. Michael, I'm not even going to try that surname, who now leads the industry in electric powertrain development. A bold move. This likely indicates Apple's intentions to wholly integrate EVs in the tech giant's somewhat secret autonomous vehicle fleet. Over the last two years, Apple's cars have driven over 80,000 miles in autonomous mode, while drivers took back control of the vehicle only every 1.1 miles driven on average. Increasingly competitive, this driver intervention rate now stands nearly neck and neck with Mercedes-Benz human intervention rate of 1.5 miles and Toyota's somewhat higher reported average of 2.5 miles. Yet another competitor, GM Cruise covered about 831,000 miles in the US last year with its cutting-edge fleet of third-generation all-electric Chevy Bolt vehicles. 
vehicles. The company currently operates Cruise Anywhere, an employee-only ride-hailing service in San Francisco and has even partnered with DoorDash to leverage its vehicles for food delivery in the future. Just this week, GM released the first edition of the Hummer EV, which sold out within the first 10 minutes, taking $100 deposits. The batteries in these vehicles use 70% less cobalt, an expensive material found in EV batteries, than GM's prior EV generation. These vehicles are set to be on roads next fall. And one of the earliest players, Alphabet subsidiary Waymo, rises far above its competitors in terms of miles driven and low human intervention rates. Waymo's 600 vehicles on the road have driven over 20 million miles in 25 cities, not to mention Waymo's additional 15 billion simulated miles. And given current rates, Waymo's vehicles require manual intervention only once every 12,200 miles, surpassing the competition. At the beginning of 2020, the Waymo One service was transporting between 1,000 and 2,000 riders per week, and roughly 5-10% to of these rides were fully driverless through the early rider program. Last year, Waymo announced a strategic partner with Jaguar Land Rover to release the I-Pace, a fully electric autonomous SUV. The vehicle's LiDAR system can see 360 degree views up to 1,000 feet away. The iPace fleet is currently being tested and will eventually join the Waymo One fleet. And of course, I needn't remind you about Tesla's unassailable for self-driving data lead, literally billions and billions of real world miles collected. And this fleet and this data lead is growing exponentially. Final thoughts. As electric vehicles improve in performance and witness a drop in overall operating costs, Forward-thinking individuals, companies, and investors <laughs> shout out to everyone who's currently watching this YouTube channel are rapidly transitioning to all-electric transport. Battery technologies underpinning tomorrow's EVs are witnessing explosions in efficiency, decimating prices, and minimizing the environmental costs of contemporary transit. If Tesla alone can achieve its goal of producing 3 terawatt hours of energy every year, it will completely transform the energy and transportation industries. And I'm just going to interrupt here. Tesla is going to reach their goal and they are going to disrupt these industries and this is why I'm still putting every spare cent that I currently have into Tesla stock. And as 5G and next generation cellular networks catalyze the growth of driverless EV fleets, partnerships between EV manufacturers, autonomous driving companies and ride sharing services will grow increasingly vital. Plummeting prices and increased convenience will soon tip the favor towards electric car as a service options and private ownership of internal combustion engine cars will become a thing of the past. I completely and wholeheartedly agree with Peter here. Not because I have a funny feeling in my nether regions, but because I've looked at the numbers and I'm capable, at least I believe so, of inferring what that means in the future. It may sound a little crazy to say this, but he's right. In 2030, very few people will be buying new vehicles for personal ownership. Why would you bother when an autonomous taxi on demand is going to be 10 times cheaper, far more convenient, you're not going to have to park it, store it, pay for parking, pay for insurance, plus you're less likely to crash because a computer doesn't get distracted, drink, or look at women when it drives past on the road. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.